uh, Amy Coney Barrett is going to be officially sworn in. It may have already happened in Washington, D.C. by John Roberts at the Supreme Court. These swearing ins that they've had at the White House so Donald Trump can get his face in the middle of a photo op with uh, Brett Kavanaugh and Neil Gorsuch and now uh, Amy Coney Barrett are all merely uh, ceremonial. They're not real. It's just, you know, for the photo ops and the media and all that kind of stuff. But now, you know, if not shortly, you know, if not a short time ago, a short time from now, Amy Coney Barrett will be on the court. She will be sworn in and she will be about doing the court's business. And there will be a solid six to three hard right majority on the Supreme Court put into place by a series of illegitimate Republican presidents. You know, in, in 2000, the Supreme Court put George W. Bush into the White House. They are preparing to use that power, this awesome power that the Supreme Court has taken onto itself, and the awesome power, frankly, that the Constitution conferred on it in the first place. They're preparing to use that power in ways that, frankly, I, I don't think we've seen in the United States since, since pre-1927. And, you know, it's the, it's the, uh, it's the Susan Sarandon thing, you know, she, she was like, you know, people are asleep and if, if Trump becomes president, well, that'll wake them the hell up. And it sure did. Right. I, it's not the way I would have wanted it to happen. I, you know, I'm not, not a fan of that line of thinking, but it has woken the hell up a lot of Americans. And when the Supreme Court starts not just striking down Obamacare and, and the rest of the Voting Rights Act and maybe even the Civil Rights Act, and God only knows what else they're going to go after, obviously Roe v. Wade, but when they st and, and gutting, you know, further gutting your right to unionize, there have been over 30 cases that the Supreme Court has decided since the 50s, gutting your right to unionize. But uh, I, when they start striking down Social Security and Medicare, when they start striking down, uh, you know, the minimum wage and long-term unemployment insurance, because none of those things are in the Constitution, and this is the this is the whole, you know, kind of shtick and sh and scam that these originalists and textualists, which are, you know, just fancy words they use to say we know what the Constitution means and we know what the founders meant, and you don't, and, and it's just it's it's a religion that these guys are practicing. It's got a belief system. It's got a priesthood. And it's just it's just a religion. And Brett Kavanaugh just signaled that he is more than willing to help Donald Trump get a second term. Now, keep in mind, Donald Trump put him on the court. Brett Kavanaugh was very upset by the hearings where Christine Blasey Ford came forward and accused him of sexual assault. And he promised revenge, you'll recall. In fact, I, I believe he did it during the during the hearings that he promised revenge. Well, here it is. The Supreme Court has single-handedly decided that corporations should be, you know, should have the rights of persons. This was some time ago, but this this was never put into law by any legislature. It was never signed into law by any president. It was the Supreme Court uh, writing the law. The Supreme Court decided that money is the same thing as speaking. Having money in your pocket or spending money to influence an election is the same thing as speaking out or writing an op-ed. That money is speech. It was never, again, put into law or anything else. I mean, this is just the power that the Supreme Court has. The Supreme Court has gutted the rights of workers. They've devastated environmental protections. They've ripped apart civil rights and voting rights laws. And they're continuing to do this, by the way, and I'll get into more detail on that in a few minutes. Um, and they've made it harder for the average person to hold banks and financial institutions accountable for their ripoffs. They've empowered CEOs and giant corporations and reduced the power of voters, average citizens, and consumers. And now they want it, now they're getting ready to prepare, you know, preparing to hear cases that would gut abortion rights, that would kill off Obamacare and health care rights more generally, even possibly destroying institutions like Social Security and Medicare. And if you think I'm exaggerating, I believe it was Sheldon Whitehouse. It might have been another senator um, who asked Amy Coney Barrett, is Medicare constitutional, is Social Security constitutional? And rather than simply saying, well, yeah, of course, they've been the law in the United States for over, you know, Social Security 90 years, Medicare 50 years, uh, 60 years. Uh, she didn't say that. She, she said, basically, I'm not going to tell you what I think about that. 
I mean, the Supreme Court's power is extraordinary, but the reality is that it's also balanced in the Constitution by power given to Congress in Article 3, Section 2, which gives the Congress the right, the power, to regulate the court and to define exceptions to what the court can rule on. And, you know, Congress hasn't used that power in a long, long time, but they can do it. They decide how many people are on the court. They've changed the number of people on the court numerous times, uh, twice in response to you know right-wing efforts. Uh, John Adams cutting the size of the court to to burn Thomas Jefferson, and and uh, you know the Republicans in the House and Senate cutting the size of the court to burn Andrew Jack uh, Andrew Johnson. Excuse me. So what can, what else can Congress? You know, Congress Congress can decide how many people are on the Supreme Court as I just said. They can force the court to operate under the Federal Code of Judicial Ethics so that Clarence Thomas and, and, and his uh, right-wing buddies can no longer be wined and dined by right-wing billionaires. They can, Congress can pass laws telling the court what cases and what issues they may or may not decide. That's an extraordinary power. Congress can expand the entire federal judiciary, including the court, to dilute the power and impact of Trump's unqualified right-wing judges. And the question now is whether Congress is actually going to do that. Because if they do, if the Democrats seize control of the House and Senate and begin to try to, to constrain this court, you are going to see an explosion that's going to make the Tea Party look small as the right-wing billionaires start pouring money into astroturf organizations, the, the, the long established ones and the brand new ones that they're going to create. And you're going to see all these Trump anzies out there, they're going to, these, these, these Trump hoppers, they're, they're, they're going to shift, right? They're going to start, because they're all getting their information from the right wing billionaires, whether it's being, you know, shoveled to them via right wing billionaire Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook or whether it's, you know, however it's getting there. Or whether it's coming through, you know, uh, Charles Koch and, and, you know, via FreedomWorks or what, whatever it may be. Shelley Adelson shoveling money out the door. And they are going to raise holy hell. They're going to say, oh, you're packing the courts and how dare you and you have no right and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And the Democrats have to look at what Mitch McConnell did. It's a conversation I had with the, the conservative woman who called at the very end of the show yesterday. Everything the Republicans have done was legal. It might have been immoral. It might have been huge violations of standard practices and tradition, but it was legal. And all these things that I'm talking about here, the Democrats can do, and they are legal. This is the Tom Hartman Program. So get ready for a really big fight. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Jared in Downington, Pennsylvania. Hey, Jared, what's on your mind today? Hello, Tom. we got one more week left until hopefully this nightmare, well, I mean, the nightmare at least ends, and then we can go back to at least the rebuilding. But um, um, I want to talk about the I think it's going to get worse board. before it gets better, Jared. But anyway, go continue. Well, that's, that's, it, no, that's been going on since forever. I mean, that's. Yeah. It's always going to keep getting worse. But um, I want to talk about um, Supreme Court and what Democrats can do to maybe stop them. Okay. In, um, in um, Venezuela, uh, the, the um, right-wing opposition there won like a supermajority in their legislature. And... Mm -hmm. um, they were not going to do anything. They, they were basically going to stall and basically make sure that the government doesn't work and that basically everything just shuts down, all social services and everything like that. So during the lame duck session, they passed a law where they created a parallel Congress to the state legislature, I mean, the Venezuela legislature there. So... My question is, why is it we don't just pass another, you know, create another court 
parallel to the Supreme Court and declare that court null and void because it does not represent the will of the people. It doesn't represent um, the United States con uh, uh, Constitution. And um, as far as I'm concerned, it has lost any legitimacy. To do that, Jared, you'd have to amend the Constitution. I mean, you know, the, 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 the federal judiciary is, uh, well, the Congress is authorized to create a federal judiciary in Article Three of the Constitution. And Congress did that Im immediately after we became a republic in 1789. And, and, then, and then amended it again, you know, fairly quickly, and I think it was 1796. Um, but that, that power to create the judiciary you know, is is there? We created the judiciary, but I don't think that that gives. In fact, I'm quite sure that does not give Congress the power to dissolve the federal judiciary. They can simply regulate it. Now they could handicap it, you know, like like uh, Congress did to Andrew Johnson when he, and you know when Lincoln was assassinated and Johnson became president. There were there were uh, ten slots on the Supreme Court. One was open. And Congress came in and said, we're not going to let this slave-holding fool put anybody on the Supreme Court. And they passed a law reducing the size of the court down to seven. Now, there were still nine guys on it at the time. And so, you know, nobody got kicked off. But Andrew Johnson, for the three years or so that he was president, uh, did not have an opportunity to put somebody on. So, but that, that's about as close as they can get, Jerry, as far as I know. Um, well, I mean, they have to do something. I mean, this court is yep. inherently... Expand the size of the court. Um, and pass a law that says that if they're going to use, if they're going to use judicial review, if they're going to make a decision based on their interpretation of the Constitution, they have to have a supermajority, one way or the other. I mean, this is a sword that cuts both ways, or a knife or whatever metaphor you want to use.